What is going on, guys? Welcome to Double Tap. This is Mash Those Buttons podcast dedicated to the FGC. This is episode 370. And on today's episode, we've got Evo Japan 2024 this weekend. Tekken 8 is making some people very bipolar. And uh, we start talking uh, patching and fighting games. I'm, of course, your host, Crash. And with me, I've got my fellow host. we got Static Gorilla in the building. What's going on? And of course, the voice of reason on every episode here. We got Ja as well. I was going on. I'm not a host, though. You know, I'm just I'm just here. <laughs> he's a host. He, he says he's not a host. He says I'm just support. Like, <laughs> nah. He's, he's at this point. He's a host. He's been deemed. He's been deemed. He's, you have been you have been taken into the house. I'm here to fill knowledge gaps. That's that's. <laughs> There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> exactly. That's what you're here for. Well, welcome, guys. Welcome to all the uh, returning listeners out there. Appreciate you guys giving us an extra two quarters for another credit this week. And for those that are stepping up to the cab as first time listeners, thank you for uh, for for you know deciding to come out and hang out and getting swindled into actually listening to us. Uh, if since you're new to this, you obviously you might not know uh, chapters are available for everything that we're talking about here on the show on YouTube, Spotify, and any platform that is supporting podcasting 2.0. Uh, yeah, we've got a, we've got a good episode. I mean, every episode is good, but we got some, uh, some good stuff to get into, but before we get started on this episode, we're going to take a look at last week where we have a question of the week and a poll, but the poll is going to come up later because it's going to tie into our folks attack that we got later, uh, coming in on the, uh, on the episode. So let's get into the question of the week. Uh, for those that, uh, you know, kind of, uh, hadn't heard, uh, we kind of started dissecting or kind of going over the uh, Hitbox uh, uh, announcement, right? The licensing program uh, that was announced and kind of the the feedback. And we just started, you know, we wanted to get in and get a little bit of clarity on it. Uh, spoilers, if you haven't heard the episode, we didn't get a lot of clarity still. <laughs> We're still trying to figure it out. Uh, but we still wanted to hear you guys, your thoughts on uh, on the actual uh, license por- uh, program or actually the partner program. And uh, yeah, we got some awesome answers from our Discord, which we'll uh, plug it in a second. Uh, this one comes from, I'm uh, just going to get the right image. There we go. Uh, from Earthworm Ben. I feel, <laughs> I feel like they are insane. Uh, until they can get away with a patent saying they own the leverless layout, they essentially are asking you for a license for a very outdated design of case, PCB connector, and even the software is not compatible with current gen or has uh, SOCD. Uh, yeah. Um, quick premise here. The, uh, the, the, the feedback has not been great. And I, I'm not just saying from our awesome listeners, but in general from fighting games, it hasn't been looking too hot. Uh, Drex 1981 says just simple, just five words. They're following the 3DO model. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a deep cut. Um, for those that don't know what the 3DO was, it's not about to be a historic, uh, breakdown on it, but, uh, basically 3DO was a console. Didn't succeed too much. Most people know it as the one that has the like those really crazy Zelda games on it. Uh, it was just manufactured by Panasonic, but 3DO, the company, like didn't manufacture themselves. They were like licensing the hardware because they couldn't, they didn't have the resources to do it. So they were like passing it off and like letting others manufacture it under their licensing. Super deep cut, but that's that's what he's uh, he's kind of stating is is what they're going. Uh, not like the name doesn't say it, but you're kind of dating yourself a little bit there. But it was a good answer regardless. Had me go into my history books to go find that one out. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, like I said, we, we've got some more answers, but we kind of kept it a little short because the premise, like I said, it's still a little vague as to what the program is. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're doing our diligence to try to get that answer and try to figure it out. But uh, right now, the, the FTC is kind of a little bit on a, of a lull in it, um, as are we. But as soon as we find out an official statement or something from it, we'll, we'll just leave this on, on the la- uh, on on the side for now. But we appreciate everyone that has, uh, you know, obviously answered, given us some, uh, you know, some some good uh, feedback on it. You guys can check out our Discord, uh, which is doubletap.gg for slash Discord, which you can get involved with with these questions of the week, and of course later on in the poll, which you know, gets plastered all over our social medias at Double Tap FGC. Make sure to follow. Uh, so let's get into the show. Uh, so this week, like I said, uh, we've got this weekend coming up. We've got Evo 2024. Uh, it feels like just yesterday that Evo uh, just started and me and you static went to the very first one out in Tokyo, which is still now in Tokyo. I know it did one year where it was not and it was a little bit of a hike. Now it's back. Uh, it's been back, uh, you know, in person. This is the first in-person uh, Evo Japan since the pandemic. No. Uh, is that the first? No. Hold on. Am I thinking the wrong one? Yes. 
2023 was. You're right. 2023 was. What am I thinking? I completely like skipped 2023. It was a bit of a blur there. Yes. It's the first one to actually be paid for. That's this, correct. For entry wise is what it was. It's the first one you actually get to pay entry for. All previous Evo Japans have been uh, free to enter. That was just due to Japanese uh, gambling laws and such uh, because of the way like the, the price pool would have to scale and such. Um, doesn't apply anymore. It's something they've been hard at work to fix. Um, and this is the first year. So it's it's come back out with a, about a 14 million yen prize pool uh, with about 1 million going across uh, first place on a lot of these different games that are going out there. For those that don't know, 1 million yen is about six, $7,000 USD for, con, you know, for uh, in conversion rates as of, as of today, uh, which is the 22nd of April. Because of Street Fighter, Street Fighter has a ton of entrants as well. I was I was so gonna that, say yeah, yeah yeah like so so yeah the entries right now are, it's it's still insane uh, we're talking over six thousand uh, I think right now the total entries six thousand five hundred and twenty six entrants with about seventy five percent of that going to Street Fighter six so seventy five percent of the total attendees of that six thousand is just there to throw some fireballs and get hit with uh, Luke's uh, crouching medium punch so good for them that's about forty nine hundred people right now. Uh, but still, the other games, Tekken 8, uh, doing good. 1,200 entr uh, entries on that. Grand Blue uh, with about 750. Great for Rising. Uh, then we've got, uh, let me see. Of course, we've got Kills Gear Strive still uh, still strong. I think about 800 and some change. And then we've got Undernight and KOF both at, uh, I think they're both at about 350 apiece. Uh, Undernight is at... Oh, Under Knights at 350. KOF 15's at five, uh, 450. And then we've got Third Strike. At 459, yes, we are talking Damn. competitive third strike in Japan in the year of 2024. Uh, kind of insane. Kind of insane to, to watch. I think it actually might be my most anticipated part of the tournament. Don't get me wrong, I'm going to watch other things. Yeah. But I think I'm most excited to watch super high level third strike. It's, yeah. Um, Because I just remember a lot of third strike, especially the high level stuff. Like there are still YouTube videos, 13, 14 years old. Uh, of like just highlight reels of basically some of these insane players, these insane legends uh, coming out and playing now still in this tournament. And it's just going to be a bloodbath and I can't wait. Scan lines and all, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Give me the scan. It's, uh, it's all running CRTs. on original hardware, right? Like, I think it's on you know, arcades, it, it, yeah. Yeah, it's an all. Well, I mean, if you're going to do arcades, yeah. <laughs> like I hope Japan's the one that's going to be able to at least provide that, right? Right, right. Um. I mean, and it's going to be like the progenitor to like, you know, Third Strike in Evo yep. later this year as well. I was going to say, a preview to Evo, 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 <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, American Evo. Um, but also, yep. like, I, I guess they're using the same type of uh, systems that they're going to use here so that people can use their controllers. Um, yeah, never, I think it's hmm. a, I think it's supposed to be super guns, right? Like, I, I believe so, that's yeah. what we're supposed to be using to actually convert to, you know, your modern mm -hmm. uh, USB sticks. For those who don't know, super guns is the interface that lets you go into an actual official board and does the conversions and stuff for your, you know, USB uh, devices. Because, uh, yeah, they didn't have, we, we didn't have readily available USB arcade sticks when these games were around. Fun fact. Yeah, that's no. your, that's your, that's your fun lesson of the day. Oh, okay. Keep that one for free. Yeah, I didn't notice that Tekken was uh, had had improved its numbers there as well. They were, went up to thousand two hundred. Yeah, it's twelve hundred. Uh, it was it was a push. Uh, I think it was like around the eight nine hundreds for a little bit, and then also in getting the game also last minute. Yeah, not just that we just got the game. We also got um, oh, what was that thing? I think there was the announcement of the of the tours and all of such. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Like, so yeah. Tekken World Tour 2024, you know, kicks off with Evo Japan, actually. Yeah. So this is the first uh, Masters event uh, for the TWT. Mm -hmm. So it's a big deal. It's yeah. a big deal. Uh, we won't see as much, obviously, you know, uh, we'll have some prop, some American representation there, I would assume. Uh, but it, it, it is, you Sonic know, it, it's yeah. it's spread out. Uh, yeah, it's spread out with, like I said, ma master, this is a Master Plus event. It's actually only two Master Plus events in the entirety of the tour, which actually are both the Evos. Um, and Master Plus are the ones that give you just like the most points. Like to put it in yeah. perspective, Master for first place gives you 560 points, uh, while as Masters Plus give you like 800. Damn near like double. Uh, damn near. Um, yeah. So However, yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty coveted event to go to. Now the year we went to we went in 2018. There were I think uh, how do I say no announcements. Um, 
I'm surely hoping that we get some because we have two anticipated uh, characters. Grambler has a character that's coming out that was alongside Vane. Vine. Is it Vane? Beatrix. Vane. Yep. Yeah. Vane. Guilty Gear is still waiting on whoever is coming in May. <laughs> Slayer. Um, and we know it's Slayer. We, we know need, it's Slayer. We need a street. We need an Akuma trailer. We need a follow up. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, so besides the awesome, awesome, obviously matches we're gonna get across the board, high level fun all weekend. Yeah, it's really, it's really looking at like this looks like a good spot to make some announcements. I mean, hey, it's no secret, two XKO, aka Project L, is going to be there. There will be a build there. There will be uh, Alawi will be there. They've made, they've announced it on on Twitter uh, that Alawi will be in the playable build there. So, you know, if you got two XKO coming out, you got League of Legends coming out uh okay i don't want to say just league of legends it could be it could be a multiple multiple but we know what it is a league fighter right now so another character from another franchise is added it's a league fighter anyway uh you know we got lawi there to play so a new build um you know i think this is a great opportunity on or it's either a great opportunity for them to come out and actually have some hype and just you know get evo japan in front of everybody um or maybe the other you know the other developers are, are probably going to be like yo Two X KOs here. Let's not, you know, we're gonna get overshadowed a bit because people are looking for footage. They want to see it. Uh, supposedly you're gonna be allowed to record and such. So we're gonna be seeing some, you know, the handy cams, all that good stuff, and then whatever influencers they probably have to get some time to probably play the game. We're going to see some new stuff. So the e- so this this weekend, Evo 2024 is gonna have a lot of news one way or another. Uh, and, but I'm hoping, yeah. I am hoping for Akuma though. I am hoping yeah, for Akuma if, as well. That's like my hit second. If you're going, I do remember when I went and it was like BB Cross Tag and Arika were there testing their yep. games and they mm-hmm. loved any type of feedback. I mean, they were, they were like, yeah, tell us what do you, what did, what happened? What'd you think? Everything, everything, everything. Write it down on this dry erase board. Remember they were all ready to like yeah. hear everything. I, I still, bro, I still got like mm. business cards yeah. from some people in SNK, uh, you know, forgive me for not remembering off the top of my head, but it's like official business cards from them. Like, Hey, you know, would love to get more information. They're like, Whoa, here's my card. I'm one of the designers or one of the directors for this. I was like, cool. I yeah. still have that business card out of respect. Cause I was like, yo, this, I got, I was like, yo, this is sick. I think I have a drawer also, full of everything that I got from there. Yeah. 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 So those, it's a, it's a big, it's a big opportunity to network as well. Um, so if you are out there, if you're a content creator, um, you know, or if you really, you know, if you really just want to, to, to actually, you know, get a chance to talk to these developers and, and talk to, you know, the awesome people that are working on these different games, like that's, that's, that's a great spot to be at, to do so. Uh, so yeah, and uh, you know it's also not a bad not bad area to get some food. You know, can't recommend the Denny's. Those are Denny's around the block from the last venue we were there at, and Denny's there kind of hit still. It was it was pretty good. I was I was thoroughly impressed. Uh, Denny's aside though, yeah, announcements uh, coming this weekend from Evo uh, 2024. I'm looking forward to it. I like I said, I am going to be stoked on the Third Strike tournament. So many legends. Uh, there's an awesome post on uh, our fighters uh, from Boogie Native uh, who posts like. A bunch of go-to killers and these names are like those these are names that you're just gonna know there's multiple evo winners super battle opera champions cooperative cup champions in here um there are some that are missing unfortunately but if you just want to get a look at what like a preview like just go to youtube put any of these guys names in put their strike and just get ready to be hyped because you're going to be wanting to play some third strike after seeing some of these clips and then on the other side on the other side of it you're probably gonna be like i could never I couldn't like these guys are just like inhuman. So I'm super stoked. I can't wait for that. That's going to be a sick bracket. So I'm going to keep my eyes glued for that for sure. Um, and then if any, if Evo Japan's any way uh, to kind of, you know, show how uh, Evo will be later this year with the retro tournament that's going to go on there for third strike. We're in for a good time. We are in for a good time because Evo Japan is like, though it's great. Um, it's not as international as, as regular Evo. Um, I think it's going to grow though. I mean, it has been growing. Like it's like, you know, 6,500 people like showing up pretty good number. Um, but I don't think it gets as much international play as, uh, as regular Evo does. So I think, you know, like I said, the third striker is going to be sick, but then seeing what like true international is going to be like, especially with maybe some of more American legends coming out, it's going to be a good time. Yeah. I'm a big fan of those first attends that they're always putting down from oh, out, yes, in, yes. out in Japan. So it's going to be a super hype weekend. Uh, but go ahead. You were saying long sets, long sets all day. Uh, that's that's how you know you who's the real better player. We don't do those first to threes. No, we're doing first to tens, first to fifteens, first to twenties. 
Yeah. Once you yeah. know when I beat you, it's like it, it, there's a real digit there. All right. So yeah, Evo Japan 2024 is happening this weekend. Make sure to to check it out. Get on the streams. I know the the times are going to be kind of nuts for for people. I think for on the East Coast, it's like a 14 hour difference. I believe like 14 ahead. So yeah, if they're like 12 o'clock at noon starting. That's like 10 o'clock or eight o'clock, you know, at night, the previous night for you guys. So it's more of an evening uh, uh, watch for, for everybody on the, on the East Coast. Yeah. Uh, so you know, just a note there, if you really want to check it out live with chat and all, it's going to be hype. Yeah. Going to order pizza. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Order yeah, early food, pizza, microwave it all. There you go. All right. So even Japan 2024 this weekend, make sure to check it out. Uh, we're going to be taking a quick ad break real quick, guys. And we're going to be jumping back onto some Tekken 8 and how it's just f- flipping some people's minds. I don't, I don't know what's going on there, but we're going to find out. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. All right. And we're back. Evo Japan this weekend. We'll look forward to that. But right now, let's look at the present. Let, let's look at what's going on right now uh, in, uh, in in one of our, these games that make up our awesome community. And that is Tekken 8. Uh Bro, Tekken has just been getting the gears, you know, the the gears grinded to it, man. It's it's like hot and cold. People, you know, people are liking it, others are not, and it's it's just getting back and forth. Right now, it's I don't want to say it's like in, a, in the best spot right now, but you know, it, this is something we wanted to, to talk about because um, it's just been showing up on our timeline. So, so static, what what the hell is going on with Tekken Eight right now? So on the seventeenth, what is that about? Uh, five six days. About five days. Five ago. six days yeah, ago. Yeah, um, Nee put out a tweet. Said, "My opinion: Tekken Eight is not fun. Aggressive is actually mm. just an absurdity. I think I don't. Uh, I haven't adapted to this game. I'm I'm just correcting him a little bit because I'm sure it's translated. As someone I've been doing, the as I've been doing this since Tekken One so far, Tekken Eight is a lot of things I can't understand." I was about to say, we need to translate you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I was reading it. I was reading it verbatim, and then I was like, "Man, uh, let me." Uh, You're trying to fix it uh, yourself. Fix like I, is, cute. I, yeah. I hit yeah. heat gauge. I yeah. I win. Uh, <laughs> yes. Like, and then all the responses look like paragraphs, though. Like, oh yeah, bro. Like, I mean, when when a top player, you know, especially knee, like knees, knee is very well. You know, first of all, incredible player, right? Um. He's also well regarded in in the community, right? Like a lot of people look to him as 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 an example yeah. of of like great Tekken, yeah. right? He's he sits up there in, in one of the greats. So when you have someone like that, that is just like, yo, I am not having a good fucking time. Like I am not liking. I don't like the game. I think it's too aggressive. Um, I can't adapt to it. Like basically at this point, they're they're just showing that they're just frustrated with the game. Um. And and that holds weight. That holds weight to people um, because maybe, you know, there's others that are feeling that same way. And then when you have like players that are literally like one of the gods of the game going like, yeah, I'm having a problem too. There's weight in the sense of like, okay, it's not just you. So you kind of feel better. But then how does the entirety, you know, the entirety of the community feel where a top player like that is just like, yo, I don't get it. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I think this shit's too, too, too press W, man. Like, listen, okay. I, 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 I get where he's coming from though. And it's sort of what I've been saying with the character that I was wanting to learn, which is, which is Jin. I'm Jin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Eddie. I've been trying to learn Eddie. I said Jin because I was thinking of Jun because you were the one who told me that Ni nee had, um, Ni nee was saying that Jun is busted or broken or she's really yeah. good. And I'm like, well, that's mm-hmm. the character I'm learning. Fantastic. I like to learn her. And, to me, I thought she had a difficulty curve, but that's because I've learned her for the first time. Um, mm-hmm. And granted, I can go back to Tekken Tag 1 and try to learn her from there, and I can't tell you anything. But um, now, when I'm learning Eddie, I feel like Eddie has a learning curve from other games. Um, you know, there were, there were ways to go into different things. Now, again, I haven't trained or practiced as much as another player, but... I always appreciated that there were players that had to, um, that actually went a step further and a lot of steps further is actually, cause I'm not that good, but a lot of steps further is in Tekken to be good. And you could tell by the way they're playing like high level Tekken at Evo or at any, any event, even like Tekken World Tour, like you can see the amount of work they put in. 
and mm-hmm. it's entertaining as hell. But I mean, when you when you when everybody can tell how the 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 sort of how do I say when everybody can calculate the intricacies and it's not as intricate anymore, like does everybody already know the secrets? You know what I mean? Like like is there really anything else to maybe learn or to appreciate? Does it this, depreciate this is, actually? Th- th- this is like the thing that I've like seen so often now. And like at first I thought it was just a case of like, oh, this is just old guard saying stuff, right? Like mm-hmm. I put an example for games like like Marvel 3. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like you remember the bull like the the crazy amount of shit people gave Marvel 3 when it dropped, right? They're oh, like, of course. this is not Marvel 2. This is not a Marvel game. Mm. Look at this. It's so easy to do this and that, right? Like, it, j- the game basically is different, right? And some people could adapt and some people can't, right? Like, how mm. many times do we see OGs from, like, Marvel 2 that are trying to play Marvel 3 and they're like, nah, I can't, oh, yeah. right? They just they can't I've... adapt. They just, and, and they would give up, right? Some of them would give up. Some of them continued on and, and still played the game, right? This is it's the same thing that's happening tech and eight like after knee like made that posting uh that post like there was a clip of jdcr mm-hmm. talking about tech and tag i want to say it was one yeah i can't remember if, if one well no tech and six already came out so it had to have been two right yeah i think it had to two came two. out after six had, yes two came after two uh, so two came after six excuse me yes. like he talks about tech and tag two and like Bro, if that shit was in 16 by 9 and better definition, you'd think the video was done today. Yeah. Uh, clearly, and, and also if he aged, because clearly he looks like a fucking baby in that does video. Not, does but, not crack. But, but it, it was literally the same thing. Like, hey, I think the damage is too high. I think I can't. I, can't he even, I believe he said the word adapt in there too. I could be inserting that, but I'm like pretty sure he said adapt in there. And I'm like, oh my God, it's just a broken record. It's like, it just happens every time a new iteration comes out. Like it, it's hard because I think it's also harder because Tekken Seven was just around for so long. Yeah, like like Tekken Seven had a long fucking life, even 20, longer for anyone that was out in the East, right? Because they yeah. had it a year extra than us. Yeah, so was, they've been playing Tekken that way for a long time. It was at Evo twenty fifteen in demo. Yeah. And then yeah, 2016, like it was almost a decade. Only. Yep. Almost a full decade of yep. this thing being out. Um, and they've been playing tech in the same way for almost a fucking decade. And here comes However, eight that just, you know, changes, flips the script on things. I, I'm not going to, um, you know, I'm going to still say about Ni. Nee, he was complaining in the last game about all the guest characters. And now they made a Tekken with no guest character. And he's like, this is not for me. But, this first of all, me. first of all, what? first of all, that Tekken Seven's DLC really, really oh. was wild. Um, like, yeah, like, and I'm, I'm Leroy, not. We have not seen a Leroy since Tekken Seven, and I right. hope we never do because top six in Evo Japan I, out of eight I players, remember, all yep. six of them are running. Now him. you remember Evo Japan? That, huh? that, yeah, I remember <laughs> it even more now because I remember that my man's legs were fucking just ripped off afterwards. Yeah. Bandai Namco was like, "Yeah, that's not happening well, he again." Broke his well, leg bah! for real, for real, like in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like like how Jin did in the, in the Netflix yeah. show, yeah. So, but what I'm saying is, of course, I mean, obviously, there th- those those DLCs. I mean, Eliza and Akuma and Geese were were nuts. But um, yeah, he was complaining that he couldn't play Tekken at that time. But now you've got your Tekken, you've got your characters. Yeah, surely a little bit easier. But uh, and you're a top player, and you don't have the guest characters. What is there to complain about? It's just it's just a matter of adapting. Um, I, like, I like, I'm my, just, my, like my like my like like my talking more about Marvel three, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. if we were to tell people that today, they wouldn't believe it, right? Like right. how celebrated that game is now. Oh, of course, right? Like, like no one here today is bitching about how three uh, Marvel three was when it started. It just you just adapted, you grew into it, you accepted it, and you know you made it its own thing, right? It it, it grew and developed competitively oh. the meta changed and yep. we we grew with the game and now it was just accepted right we just celebrate it right like it's just gonna be the same thing with eight like it, it is. it's just going to grow and like five and you know street fighter five was the same deal right street fighter five had a rocky ass start but by the end of it you know you look back like okay it was solid it was actually a good game like you kind of give it its flowers right and be like okay you know what 
it just had a rough start. Tekken 8 could just be having a rough start at the worst, but it will evolve. You got to give it time. The game and, and has only been out like three months. I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago as well with Ja learning Marvel 2 and the, the couple of buttons. You know how there's hidden buttons behind buttons in yeah. Marvel 2. Like, uh, you know, like light lights gets you to your mediums. And yeah. I mean, it happens with every game. It just doesn't happen at a large scale because we have now we have able to have influence. We have players that actually have voices that can get uh, 6.4 likes and all these engagements now rather than just hearing it through a magazine like a month or two months later back when Tekken Tag 1 was out or all these other games or EGMs and all of that. So, yeah. you know, I think is the way news spreads as well. Um, this can also go into the topic we're going to talk about later with patch notes as well. Mm-hmm. Um, for sure, for sure. But, so yeah, so 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 Nick, good, so yeah. Nick took to that Twitter. He hit yep. us up with that, saying, "Yo, I can't adapt. Mm-hmm. What the fuck, right?" And then uh, that <laughs> that does that does numbers. It does yeah. traction. So people are like, you know, people are just you know, when you like I said, when you hear a pro player like that, people are gonna be like, there are fans out there. Are, they're, they're trying to console him. Just be like, yo, just understand this and that, right? Back and forth. And then he does a follow up tweet. You know, afterwards, uh, stating, you know, I didn't expect my opinion to have to be such a big topic, which very humbling. I, I, I don't think he posted that to go like, oh, I'm here to fucking raise a flag. He, I think he was just honestly just going like, yo, this is just where I'm at, guys. Like, yeah. holy shit. Uh, it's been three months since it was released. Honestly, you guys all you guys all know. All know. I think he's trying to say now. All now found out the depths of Tekken 8. I think T8 was made to learn quickly. This means something different from knowing how to beat your opponent. The reason I said it wasn't funny was when I realized that the legacy knowledge and strategies I learned from Tekken for a long time weren't working. Absolutely. The game's going to evolve. There's still there's still a core of it, but the game's going to evolve. Uh, because there is only reward in attack and no reward in defense, if you block, you've lost health. In this new era of Tekken, I probably haven't adapted. This may be the trend of gaming these days. Maybe I'm an old person. Lol. Uh, mm-hmm. Someone will like it or won't. Uh, I think it's very hard to make a game that satisfies everyone. I'm going to ask uh, BN, Ben and Emco, to change the game to uh, f- uh, to good for for good. To, oh, too good for pro players. It was hard for me to even translate that one. Tekken Eight can be a very good game with uh, a little with little modifications. It may it may be negative if you look at it as a legacy player, but if you think, but I think I should try and adapt to a new meta. Maybe enjoy T8. I will try hard because I really like Tekken. Sorry for the negative opinion. It, it as it's just been released okay see so he kind of like pulls it back like i feel like yeah it's just a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction like yes it's different it's going to take time it's very weird and yes maybe you know it, it like how he said stated like if you block you lose health like you know there's no reward in defense as much um but that doesn't mean there won't be defense like you, it, you we could make the joke like once again like in marvel right in marvel if you're blocking you're already like losing the game right you're like you know, it's a super aggressive game, right? Uh, but you adapt, though. Like, you can, you can still be rewarded for advanced guarding correctly, for just knowing the gaps, knowing to have good defense, knowing how to block mix-ups. Like, you you can still get rewarded. You know, t- the Tekken 8 is the same deal. Just got to let it. You got to let it cook, bro. You got to let it cook and marinate and just enjoy the recipe once it's done. Damn it, I'm getting hungry. What you got, Static? No, I was just fixing my beard. I'm just... Oh, <laughs> I, well, he's getting wrong beard. Wrong beard. Yeah. Wrong beard. I think it was John that had, that had something to say. I, I do, I do, I do have something to say <laughs> because, oh. like, just listening to this is is very interesting to me because I don't have a a, a dog in that fight. Whether you know Tekken Eight is good or not, right? But from what I've been seeing, you know, the the, the I was going to call it the fighting game industry, but it's not not the industry, but like the the fight fighting games. Like their, their development is coming more in line with the rest of the games industry, it feels like. And I think the fighting game community is feeling that. Like it's it's just very different. Like it, I think it was very easy to define, okay, well, this is a Marvel game. This is a Street Fighter game. This is a Tekken game. And they all do mm-hmm. these things. But the one thing I think you got to realize like now in 2024 is that If you're going to make a sequel to a game, if you're going to change, like, you know, go a number up, there's Mm -hmm. almost no point in moving in making a new game unless it does something different. Right. Like, I think fighting games in the past really just focused on iteration 
You know, like, they're just, yeah. okay, we're going to add this feature because it's a little bit better. We're going to add this feature because a little bit better. We wanted to add and this feature. And now we're going to put it into this one because we had this idea. We couldn't make it work then, but now we can make it work now. I think that I feel like the philosophy is a little different because think about there is no World of Warcraft 2 for a reason. There's only World of Warcraft. No. And they've had a complete in, like, game engine update in the meantime, mm-hmm. right? There's World of, War- World of Warcraft Remastered. Technically, it's not right, World of like, Warcraft two. Like, classic, 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 classic. classic. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. But it's not a sequel. Yeah, it's not yeah, a sequel. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you know, right, going right, from right. Guild Wars to Guild Wars two, it's a completely different game. Going yeah. from Counter Strike one point six to Counter Strike Source to CS Go, like these are like the game is still technically speaking Counter Strike, but they're like if you played all three, there are pretty big differences you between know, the three. There are big differences. Yes, exactly. We we don't end up we don't end up with the Street Fighter two effect, right? World, World Warrior, fucking New Challengers, Super, I mean, Turbo, Hyper Fighting, Super, Turbo, 2X, like, with all small Rainbow. iterations added things to it. No, Rainbow, Rainbow of the Mod, yeah, right. Like, we don't have that. Champion. I, I, ironically, I say that we don't have that, but I know we're supposed to have, like, Street Fighter 6 Super. Yeah. Sure. But the point, the point is that there's supposed to be a, a, a change in it, but those aren't, like numerical changes or just yeah, version changes really. I think really. that's the thing because before it made a lot of sense because they had to put a whole nother disc out if they wanted to make changes right? Uh, mm-hmm. You know like literally going from Tekken 1 to Tekken 2 Tekken 2 was probably just stuff they had ideas for in Tekken 1 and couldn't pull off you know and yeah. now because of the way games are deployed like most games now you get a disc like most of the games not even on the disc anymore you know so like you can like if tech so tech and seven for example actually in that interview i'm pretty sure it was in the interview we talked about it was it last week or the week before last i can't remember with harada and the uh, sony it was one? the week before last yeah yeah yeah, yeah. with the sony guy Sorry. yeah with the, with the so- sony guy, with the that, sony that, guy static, that static yeah. called yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh in that interview I'm pretty sure it was that interview, but he said one of the reasons why Tekken 7 lasted as long as it did is because it just kept selling. It kept selling. It kept selling. Every time they would do, like, you know, put, like, a, a maybe not necessarily a new patch, but a new character in it, new, some new DLC, it kept selling. Yeah. They could have kept on doing that, and don't. it's not just because they wanted to upgrade the, update the graphics, because, they, like I just said, you can update the graphical, the, you know, the, the graphics or the engine with a patch like you can do it. it's a, it's a big yeah. patch don't get me wrong but I'm like yeah, yeah. trust trust yeah. but you if can I put that on download go to the kitchen make a sandwich come back kind of patch yeah exactly you can do that so to go from tech and seven to tech and eight they wanted it to be a different game like they had what do i want this game to be like they had a different philosophy in mind like we want there to we want new players to be able to pick up the game and be able to play it and feel good playing it which still also has another thing that goes in line with the games industry making games just more accessible to new players which you know there the, he had a lot of responses on his original tweet so there's a lot of people that agree with him and a lot of people who think it's a bad thing that it's essentially the game is more accessible right now yeah you know having eddie mash square and be able to do like a combo like that maybe not a great idea but (laughs) that was x sorry my bad Mm -hmm. um so having a match like doing that maybe not a good idea but i do think that making fighting games more because i mean i've I've talked about this i'm not going to go too deep into it is a is is a good thing for the for the for the fighting game community it's actually helped other game communities like uh well i mean League of Legends competitive scene exists because it's accessible. Uh, there's a lot more people who actually got into shooters because like Call of Duty is at the low end accessible. Overwatch at the low end is accessible. So having that accessibility is is good there. And I really think that the battle the FGC is going to have over the next like you know I guess like time period, maybe this era of fighting games is how do we balance keeping that competitive integrity while also making it easier for newer players to 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 get involved and in, in, in play the games. But that's what why I, I that's what I thought was interesting about this. That's what I see when I see his tweets. When I see a very good player be like this is this is not playable. And specifically the thing, the thing he says that the things he knew before are no longer applying. That's what maybe I'm like because it's a different game. You gotta play it's it like a different it's a new game, game, dog. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You're not the fundamentals are going to be there, but not everything. Like I like yeah. when everything when when it gets to the point where he where everything you know about this game, let's say Street Fighter Seven comes out, and everything we've learned all the way up until Street Fighter Six, the fundamentals no longer apply. 
that's when you have a fucking problem. Like, like completely, like right. nothing works. Fun footsies aren't the same. Like, if Ryu is fucking pressing down, down twice and then punch to do sure you can as is like default, like you fucked up somewhere. Like, right. <laughs> I'm, like I'm not saying just on the command thing, but I'm like, that's how far it needs to go to really, really be that like, but like evolving it, like it still has to have that essence, but it doesn't have to still play exactly the same. You have, like you said, it was an opportunity. And I think that's what they, you know, I think that's now what they're looking at. Um, like me not being the only one to actually yeah. post up about it. We had our son Ash as well posting up. And I think it, his was more a little bit like satire, I think. I think he was kind of making more fun of the situation. But he has also voiced his his thoughts on the game. Um, but, dude, this, like I said, look at that JDCR video when you go find it. If someone uh, listening actually ends up watching it, go check it out and tell me. If that shit was not in, if that shit was not four by three and he didn't look like a baby, you'd think it was done today. It's just, we're just, it happens every new fucking version of a game when you evolve. It's just, it's just the, the nature of the beast. Absolutely. And, I, and, and the thing is, I don't think it, what he's saying is invalid either. You know? No, he, it's not. I, I, don't, I, I don't think absolutely it's invalid, not. but there's a reason why there's still players playing 1.6. There's still players playing CS uh, Source. There's still no, players fine. playing Go. You know, there's going to be play- motherfuckers playing Third Strike. Exactly. <laughs> like, like th- it's not uncommon for these. Like, for you know, just because the 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 developer has moved on to a new game doesn't mean you actually you and the, the people who like playing the old one you don't have to stop it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no. Obviously, it's not going to get a lot of tournament burn right now because the yeah. new one is out. But like, once the Tekken, I don't say once Tekken eight hype dies down but like if enough people continue to play tech and seven the to's are gonna have to take notice evo is gonna have to take notice you know they're gonna have to and they're like well it's not tech and eight so we're not gonna put it in like no like i don't think it's gonna happen so if it's that big of a problem i think the tech and community like if you don't like tech and eight continue to play tech and seven and that's the beauty of the of the fgc the fgc does not rely on publishers or developers for your tournament scenes you don't you know yet yet <laughs> you don't you can you can still play you know what you want like obviously you won't be part of what tech and world tour but how much does that yeah, matter it won't be you, you won't be part of the latest and greatest unless that is your job unless yeah. that is what you do as you know that is your career path like then you know then yes then i understand but yeah if not hey go on back all good They'll, you know you'll, you'll still be nasty there mm-hmm. uh so yeah so so tekken so tekken eight you know Little, it's, it's been divided. Uh, we'll just have to see, guys. Give it, th- you know, it's only been three months. Give it some more time. Uh, Evo Japan is going to be a great indicator of that. You know, first first uh, tournament in the in the world tour. So we will see. This will be the bar. We're going to see how people are feeling because I guarantee you, we're going to talk about this next week uh, after after the matches uh, settle and we go like, yo, you see that top eight? That shit was fucking either. People are going to go like, yo, that shit was lame or that shit was like, you know, it'll be eye opening. The chaos part of me wants to see Eddie win. The chaos, oh. the chaos of me wants to see Eddie take it all. The true, the the, the evil chaotic <laughs> yeah. on the on the chart. Yeah. It might, it might. We'll just have to see. And if we do, then nah. the static, the so, static, the static has no excuse. No, no, no. There will be more chaos when Victor wins. Oh God, yeah, if Victor <laughs> wins. It's gonna people are gonna be like, we told you, we told you. <laughs> ah, all right. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. But Tekken Eight divided. We'll hopefully we get you guys. You know, everyone, everyone unites back again uh, soon enough. But guys, we're going to be taking a quick, quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about patching. We're just talking about FGC uh, philosophies and such when it comes to uh, the, the actual development. We're going to talk about how they keep up with it. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right. And we are back. Just had to stop by and see what's up to the Tekken homies just to make sure to check up on them to see how they're doing. Uh, in the meantime, though, we do have uh, a folks attack to get into. But before we get into the folks attacks, kind of leading to the, the, the poll that we talked about last week. Uh, so we set a poll last week at the end of the episode asking you guys about patching uh, fighting games and, and actually patching them or more specifically the the it, how often you know schedule wise throughout the year would you like to see your fighting games be patched right so we gave you guys a couple of options there for once a year uh every six months every four months or every you know three times a year uh and then quarterly or even more right like when i when we're saying the patches i want to say it was closer to like you know main patching kind of like balancing and such like because minor patches day one patches and like network slash hot fixes i wouldn't count those because those are like quality of life 
necessities, right? Like bugs and stuff. You're like, you don't want a broken product. So you got to patch it to make sure the quality of life of the game is good. That that doesn't count in the rotation. This is more about balancing. Uh, so we've got, uh, we, we actually have like a really, it was a really, really close. I'm talking about within one vote. Uh, but we ended up with every six months as the winner uh, at, at like about 48% uh, with uh, every four months trailing behind it. So it seems like the consensus is like, hey, twice a year, give us like two patches. Seems to be a, a pretty, uh, you know, a pretty uh, uh, agreed upon cadence, or at least the most popular cadence right now. There was still, don't get me wrong, there were still people that were, uh, you know, that they said like, hey, quarterly or more is fine. Um, once a year, also fine. I actually thought it was going to be closer between the once a year and maybe every six months. Uh, but yeah, so this this really came up because uh, I've just kind of been thinking. It's it's kind of just been a, a a subject matter I've been thinking of for a bit. As you know, as fighting games have been evolving, as the games have been evolving, you know, and the industry has been evolving. You know, so so have we, and so have all these developers have been tackling things because you know, especially with the latest games that have been out now, we write Street Fighter Six, and you know, Mortal Kombat One, and of course Tekken Eight. Uh, it, it had me kind of looking at like, okay, you know, Street Fighter is kind of going on its one year coming up like in in june uh mk's just dropped nrs being notorious with you know their their patching in the past trying things and then tekken 8 being very fresh like you know hot out you know hot out the press right three months i wanted to compare it with things like how guilty gear has done things because it's done i think strive has been a good component to how it's evolving the patching dynamic because it's doing things that are like kind of going to become, I think they're going to become the trend, right? So to put it in perspective, the most common patch cycle for fighting games right now usually revolve around like DLC releases, right? A new character, meaning new balance. Um, and in some cases, like in Strive and such, like new mechanics and even new movesets, right? Like that's a big, that's a big deal, right? You're essentially, essentially changing the way the game is being played for, uh, not just, a, you know, competitive, right? Like it, it's really big and competitive, but also for the casual might not affect them as much. They just see it as more content, which is great because that could sell more units, which at the end of the day is what they want to do, but it definitely impacts competitive like crazy. So the mentality around has been that, right? Like, you know, when a DLC drops, we let it go. Uh, maybe, you know, when the tournament season is happening, the most you might see is like, uh, I think like, you know, a month, right? You give, you give a patch like about a month before they allow like a new character to come in, right? Just in case something fell through the crack and people are like, hey, this shit's broken or, or, or even getting an idea for the character themselves. Uh, so, so really what I'm trying to, what I'm like was trying to figure out is just like, that mentality of like letting a patch cook for how long? Like how long do you let a fighting game ride before you want to like introduce like a, a the game changing patch that like will just, you know, give you a new, you know, refresher on things, especially on the competitive side. Uh, so strictly, once again, we're talking competitive side here. Casual, you know, some changes are going to, you know, be cool for the casual uh, but I don't think it'll be as a, f I don't, I, I, at least that's what I'm thinking is that I don't think it's as uh, important, right? Yeah. Because, you know, if you're just playing the game and enjoying it, you're not going to really notice the frame data change. I don't think any casual, you know, casual just enjoying the game is going to be like, oh shit, Melina's role is now this, you know, it's now plus versus it was negative. Absolutely not really going to notice, right? The, the casuals will not care. Like they... They probably don't, especially if they leave their PS like four or five on overnight. They don't even know when it's being patched. <laughs> you know, good point. Good point. They're like, yo, was this character here last night? Like, I don't know. Like, oh, he looks cool. He looks cool. I don't remember Scorpion being an injustice. That's cool. Let's check him out. Wow. Um, better back. <laughs> yeah. Talk about characters that need to talk about balancing there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so 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 like I said, it, it it's it's kind of been about letting it letting it cook for me. Um an example of like the cadence that we've had so far on those previous games we talked about, right? Uh, Street Fighter VI right now hasn't had a real like balance patch, like a complete balance patch. It's had like a half a balance patch that came through uh, uh, after after Evo, and so there's some changes that are that came in the Ed patch as well that just recently patched uh, pa uh, came through. So we have we won't get a real balance patch till after Akuma, which has been even told from the producers of the game. They were they told it like, yo, do not expect anything crazy hitting the whole cast until Akuma drops, right? So basically, essentially, once season one is done, then they'll like kind of like, you know, 
change change to see where you know, the power dynamics are. You know, they kind of slightly did earlier with like JP and Ken, right? But it hasn't. I don't think it's done a lot. JP, Ken, and Luke. It was more. I don't think it's done a lot there. It was, it was more for like whiff punishing. Like these buttons yes. are strong. If you throw out this button a little too much, you will get whiff punished more than likely. You more than likely will. However, JP's crotch fierce did not need that nerf. Well. It was we'll, good, we'll, we'll, but we'll take it, it on the chin. For now they're getting beaten by any of your button now. So, 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 so while as you know, Street Fighter's gotten like maybe one per season if they're going to go that way, right? That kind of mm. seems around the once per once per year uh, match there. Um, uh, Mortal Kombat One, you know, I know a little bit newer still. September twenty fourth is its release date. It's received twelve patches since it's it's been dropped. Um, once again, not not count not counting. I know it's a big number, but not counting. Um, like day one patch, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. bug fix and stuff like that. This is this. There's there's been I think it's like a total of three, uh, three or four like balance inducing patch there. Uh, so NRS being NRS, they're kind of a little bit more on a, a bigger cadence of, of changing things up. Knee jerk, uh, yes. a little bit, a little bit. I I think uh, I you, mean, you think they're, they're well, like they they keep their ears to the ground with the community. So when they people do. are you know talking about certain topics or certain characters chances are you'll probably see them get touched, right? Yeah, and they do. And I think it's that they listen to a, dare I say, it's not a majority of the, uh, of, of, the, um, of the player base, of the competitive player base that might be, it might even be the, again, we're talking competitive versus casual. Like in the competitive side, it might be the only ones that actually have a voice to say it on Twitter or that might have a voice to say, oh, I hate this move. And they'll tell the, you know, the developers, I know how to access you. I'm going to put it under everything you guys tweet out. And and they do. Or when they want Melina, they'll say, I want Melina. That, that's what yeah. happened to I before. mean, yeah, it's but, definitely it's definitely the competitive side that'll that'll com- yeah. complain or, or voice their opinions way more than than the casual when it comes to this. However, I've already I've, established that. However, I think uh, uh, some patches can change because of widespread issues that they say, hey, guys. This is not just something that I'm having a problem with, but the community itself, and it is sort of breaking the game. Those are different patches where, like, that need to be addressed. Sort of like when JP had that uh, that issue with unscaled, like, um, amnesia, I believe it was, on the yeah, grab yeah. during the grab. Like, that was an actual problem, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, that that yeah. that I don't know that if I'm that digging that too one deep. Up. I I chopped that one up to like being a bug. Like, because that was not intended. That was not right, an right, intention, right, right. Yeah. you know, intended thing to it. So, so I'm looking at the cadence, and like I said, Strive has been the one that I think has done. It's the oldest one out of the ones that I listed, which is fucking crazy to think about right now. Yep. Um, so it's one been Evo on Japan, a constant or it, Evo it, it, itself, right? Yeah. 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 Besides, well, yeah. Besides 3s. Yeah. Um, it's been on a cadence of like three to four months, roundish. Like it's like average around there. Uh, with a new character, right? So, you know, kind of staying with the whole idea of like, you know, four characters per season pass and they kind of give it to you every quarter, which is like cool, more or less. Like sometimes it'll, you know, it's not like exactly a quarter, like January to March. It's like kind of a little pushed, but it, you know, if you look at it, it's within that cadence. And then they get a major patch, something. Um, at least in season three, that's where they've started with, right? When Johnny dropped and we ended up getting uh, uh, Wild Assault, we ended up getting Reflex Shield and new moves, which now they're, you there the which is like a big fucking deal right introducing new mechanics to a game essentially giving you a new version of the game kind of like what we were talking earlier John. like it's it's not a new new game but it's really just a new version that they're adding to it because if you wanted to get a new game and try something completely new outside of the realm of what you already built you're making a guilty gear strive 2 or whatever striving or guilty gear excellence whatever the fuck the next version is going to be called um and I was like, when I first saw that patch, I was like, wow, that, I was like, that, I, I, at first I was like, yo, they can do that. Like, like we, we can do that right now. That's a thing. Cause in previous, it was like, you needed a new game, right? Like a new version of the game where you were like, you know, you bought a new version of the game or maybe you got a new version called something else. And that became, you know, the new, the latest and greatest, right? The, the super, your Street Fighter fours into supers into arcade. Your, your even Guilty Gear, your Exert. Uh, uh, what was the ver- first version called again? Re- and Exert into Revelator, right? Like Exert Sign. Then Exert Rev Sign. One, excuse me. Rev thank two. you. Then Rev One, and then Rev Two. Mm-hmm. Right, like you had to get the new version, new game in order to play that. Right, the late. Like now, it's like, oh no, we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna 
just add the mechanics to the game and we're just going to you know in, include uh new moves as well which i mean it's not technically new because street fighter did it right remember v uh what is it um v reversals right those those weren't there in the beginning right? that got added later in like or v shifts excuse me mm-hmm. uh that ad, that got added in um season five right, right. But like right. like With way Dan. way later in the game's life where i think they were just like listen we're gonna throw out street, street fighter six so let's just do shit now it was because it wasn't as impactful as we thought it would be it was the dan patch uh it came in yeah. with Dan and it was like very and Akira deep, and deep such, pandemic. Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, so like we're already seeing kind of like an evolution of what the patches can do and like, you know, the way that they can, you know, really affect the scene, the, the, the games now, right. As we're kind of creeping towards this more, you know, I kind of like, you know, live service kind of deal when it comes to fighting games. Right. Cause there's no reason why these games couldn't just, continue to get patched and you know adapted for longer periods of time so that way they get more value out of the game over its lifetime right like we said said with seven the shit just you know it kept they kept just adding to it and adding to it throughout its life cycle because you know what people were buying it it worked uh but they didn't do anything too 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 crazy outside of like the insane dlc (laughs) power power levels that were going on so the thing about it, though, is that we've gotten so much discourse on, like, how often should you be patching? Like, should you be patching, you know, every year or should you be patching every six months? Like, I feel like the cadence, you know, we still don't have it locked down, which is like fine because you just got to try shit, right? Like, that's kind of like how you learn is just try shit. If you're like, oh, you know, let's do every three months. Oh, nope, that didn't work out. Like, you know, NRS, when they were patching like every other month or something like that or every month. Um, that becomes a chore, right? What do we learn there? Like players don't want to keep learning new shit. It makes it really tough on even like the casters because they have to fucking like learn new shit like every week or every event that they go to and then they might not realize it. Now they're, they feel like they might be doing a bad job, but it's like, no, because the game just keeps shifting. Um, you know, that doesn't work out. How about longer ones, right? Street Fighter Six. you know, we knew. We knew that, you know, we're not getting a patch to Lakuma drops and it was like, damn, that's a year of, dealing with the JPs, the can't almost like, I know I said we patched them, but they're still, they're still strong uh, with the cans, the JPs, your Lukes, like they're still fucking powerful. Like you're still dealing with them. Not until this big one comes out. Like, you know, how's that gone over? It has, it, it, you know, I think Street Fighter 6 because it did such a good job with the core game that it's like, you know, they, we've been able to manage, right? So you don't hear it as often from there, but you know, it's still something that's, that's still leering in people's uh, minds about, uh, but for me, you know, I'm thinking like, you know, my my idea, this is just my my opinion. I think like a hybrid style would be would be cool where you get one major patch, like a major patch a year. One major patch that like can completely define how the next season's gonna be. Right. Like where, you know, 2024 patch uh is gonna oh, the 2025 patch hits at the end of the year. And we just start the entire year on this major patch and we just get like maybe like small balances three times a year. Like, you know, anything to just really tweak like so that way, you know, you still have time to let the game, you know, kind of grow and let the meta evolve. Because like these developers, there's no way they know how the game's going to work out, right? Like they they don't have the foresight. They're just going to let, they got to let the game just rock in order for them to find out like, was this a good choice, right? And how else are you going to do it without just letting it rock with, you know, the, the, the thousands or millions of, you know, copies that are going to be sold and they get the data pool there to pull from. You say that, however, I remember that one footage of the Aki video of Woshige and another, another player, or not another player, another developer playing like a first attempt to test out the character. Mm-hmm. Remember that? I, at least, at least that's what we saw in that oh, one. I can't footage. remember it. No, it was, yeah. it was the um, I it was the it. Back behind the scenes Aki video. Oh, yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. It. Like, what about it? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. I, I don't, I don't know if I can agree with them not knowing exactly where it's gonna go for a certain character because I think that they're test at least Street Fighter Six. I feel like crash. they're comfortable. I'll take this one. I'll take this one. Um, <laughs> oh, oh shit! I, mean, I just feel He's like I just feel like Street Fighter Six is at Get a comfortable him. spot where they they're. I think the last three characters they've just released mm-hmm. are at a good spot where they're not busted. They, except for when Rashid had that busted tornado, which was a bug. Um, but like Aki is Aki's getting still getting discovered, 
and she's not the best character but still being discovered to a point where like we were like oh she's a good contender she's actually up there she can be put to master poison all of this she's not too safe not too negative like they found a formula for characters to know where it's gonna go and yes luke and uh ken are yes very strong jp are strong and therefore chun lee is strong there are other characters that are getting to a point who are going to be strong again i like i like the the long take that they're doing the with long the patch. Is, that's what i'm that's what i'm that's what my point is it's one of my notes here good example of not patching street fighter 6 yes okay and, and you know what i agree with what you said but i Thank think you. the <laughs> the fact that they have not had to do a balance patch right like a big balance patch yet, massive mm-hmm. really shows the the strength of their dev team because it is exceptional yeah. not the rule with what is happening kind of right here you know because it's it, it is not reasonable to think once this game gets into the hands of millions of people that you can anticipate what they're going to do with it like that's the thing. Like, you, you can't like it's just it's unreasonable to think that this is gonna like sh- you, sure you can have you can have the devs <laughs> test it you can have hundreds of players play test it you know but until you get it into the hands of the general public and millions are playing a game, like you just don't know. Like somebody is going to grind this game because they have nothing else to do and figure out every little exploit for all these different characters and stuff like that. So that's why when a game comes out and they have some big balance patches in the beginning, I completely understand that. We should be able to completely understand Absolutely. because it's like, oh yeah, we didn't intend that for this character, so we need to make adjustments you know, to either the other characters yeah. or, or to like this character. And the fact that street fighter is the game is, go, is, is, you know, doing well and they haven't had to do a balance patch shows how much care and consideration they put into this game in particular. But I will say it is street fighter. Th- like this is the bread and butter for Capcom. It really is like so. They're going to give the devs time. They're going to give them uh, extra. I won't say extra money, but they're going to give them the budget and the resources they need to be able to do stuff like this. A lot of other fighting games are not going. A lot of other publishers aren't going to do that with their fighting games. And I believe the game was ready to be announced way back in like almost 2020 with the with the uh, Street Fighter Olympics. Remember, they were supposed to have the yeah, Olympics, yeah, Intel, and all were, that. Yeah, and then, yeah, it was gearing up. Yeah. It was gearing up. Because yeah, Seth sure. was the last character, and then it was like, uh-oh, guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> COVID. Yeah, I guess Evo Japan's not happening, right? Or neither is Summer Olympics, right? Like, yeah, that might yeah, have been a, sure. like a blessing in disguise. <laughs> because right. they could yeah, have more got those time. More time. Yep. And we got those four other characters all uh, in the previous game. Mm-hmm. Yep, and they ended up getting a little Five. extra cash on that. Yeah. But, but yeah... Um, Absolutely. I mean, the, the that's that's what I think Street Fighter Six is is also done a great job uh, because of the transparency. But I mean, once again, I I don't want to keep harping on it. It's it's yeah. Strive, but Strive was already doing that shit, right? Developer backyards. They got their videos that are showing that shit. Like they were really big on being transparent, which is what I want honestly to see in the game when it comes to the patching. Because it's like you can show me, you can show me the changes and. To a degree, sure, you can maybe put a blurb in or whatever saying, like, we felt that. Like, but I, you know what? Even that little bit is, a, is, is good to have that transparency as to why you decided to go this direction, right? Like, it was intended for this, or maybe we felt this character was a little too strong because of this. We want to bring it down because of so. I think that, tr- that developer transparency well, is just like, like, it's, I feel like it's underappreciated. But it's like it is so I think it's so needed for 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 us to continue on this path. OK, uh, but you're on a topic of transparency because I was going to go on a topic of like patching. I think patching too much can hamper the number of the player base as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. bro. I like, do not want hmm. to learn or see changes for my yeah. character like too often like i yeah. worked all week to get this setup and now mm-hmm. you're telling me and fucking because of this patch my setup is gone and now my fucking hours are on it are gone or this matchup or this punish like or not being punished and now my game plan shit, i don't want to do that every other week bro i already got yeah. a job that's that's fine it's fine because yeah, like <laughs> i'm if, just trying to unwind right because if you're if your tactic you've been using to win isn't there anymore then you won't come back or like i remember that was specifically for mkx 
there are a lot of people that are like, wait, I was using Cassie and my bread and butter doesn't work. Like it's super slow. Her overhead was mad slow. Yeah. So, so, so as those things develop, I mean, I, honestly, that's, that's what I want to see in, in the, in, when it comes to these patches, it's just like actually, you know, attacking, you know, when, when a patch should come out, it should shake up the game, but for, you know, obviously they want it for the better, right? They want it to, to kind of fix the problems that they see, but you know, it's, the weird thing about it is like it's we're not talking about one game here. You oh know, no, that's, no, that's obviously, the, yeah, the, yeah, that, yeah. I just, I that, just, that's the, that, I'm just talking about in general for the fighting game scene. Like it's yeah. not one game. We are talking right. about multiple different developers, multiple different ways of how they want to know. apply their yeah. philosophies as to how their games are going to be. Um, so you know, it's it's going to be different, but I I think we can get at least to a uniform direction yep. in which that could be accepted would be kind of like the move, but. You know, someone has to try, right? Someone has to be the one to do the leap of faith. Uh, I think between Street Fighter and Strive, I think there's a, a a healthy combination between how they've been approaching it is like kind of where the middle ground will be for, yeah, for the and, future. And if I may, just, just really quickly, I know we're short on time, but there are games that are out there that people still play that have never been patched, such as Melee, such as Marvel 2, such as Marvel 3s. Marvel 3 kind of had a patch, right. you know, but it was more like a, oh, snap, we... The first, Mar well, hold on. Marvel 3 Vanilla was like, Marvel 3 Vanilla before it was even out had like Sentinel Health for like a month was busted. And they're like, guys, yeah. we forgot to patch the game. Here, send it. Boom, patched. Then Marvel 3 Infinite, I mean, Marvel 3 Infinite, Ultimate Marvel 3 was like, here I am. This game is dumb. You can tech everywhere. It doesn't matter. Uh, guys, we messed up. We need a patch. Boom. Never you get, patched you get again. X Factor in the air. Yeah, yeah. Remember that was a oh. thing, right? Remember well, that was in, a thing. In what? In Marvel, you uh, UMVC three. Remember that was one of the big things. You could te you can X Factor. You in can the now air. You X can Factor in before. the air, but you could also yeah, crazy. You could also tech if somebody was in the air in recovery yeah. of DP. Like, yeah. why yeah. can I tech throw? But that was obviously patch needs to be whatever. So thing is, it's it's just like these games, like you said. How long do you let it sit? In the development we're in now, like you, you, you really can't because of how much like look at Nee. Nee's there and he's able to respond about it. Like he's able to talk about it and make all of the what's wrong, Ja? You have this I think face. you're giving too much cre credence to like what people say on the internet. And the reason I say that and that is that's the problem. Mm. That's what problem with devs have, I feel. The, the, the reason I say you, you're giving it too much weight is mm. how long it takes for them to create fix and deploy these things like it's yeah. like it's they can't be like oh me doesn't like tech and eight and two weeks later have something ready to go like it doesn't work like that but that's, a lot of uh, go ahead but, go ahead but that's how i feel mortal Kombat is like they have to fix it immediately mm. and that's how they've always been i remember mk9 was just like that where it's like hey or not even mk9 uh well mkx had the problems with infinites and block string infinites but MK9 was just like, hey, these problems are coming. Like, all right, we, we got to do whatever we can. And we need to keep the hype up and, and go, 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 go. And it was just like a different, it was a different um, top tier character almost every month in one of the MKX games. It was very weird. If they fixed them that fast, I would say their data was matching what they were seeing people say on the internet, right? That, yeah. That's that's what I would say. Sense. If, if the, if the, if the uh, data they were getting back from the game was mm. was telling them the same exact thing then they that they probably put it on priority because yeah. it is not easy to do these oh, things especially not. when you're dealing with a console like a lot of mm. this development th these guys are planning like three six a year out yeah. you know that's how long and they, they're they're really planning these things out so to see somebody say something on the internet and then to break that cycle you know, yeah. with the limited budgets they already have, that I think like I said, it, it feels like a lot. Like it, it would have to, they would have to have some really, really compelling evidence on the data side for them to do that. And I think your budgeting, uh, it, that might have contributed to why Injustice Two was literally, oh, the turtles came out, we're done supporting the game. Like <laughs> it's going to cost too much to even nerf or fix any of these characters with all these IPs and. We're just going to go back to Mortal Kombat twice, you know?
they went to 12 and was it no i'm sorry we're, we're 11 and MK1. to 11 and yeah. we're in 12 yeah, we know yeah, we're we know 12. what number we know, we're in yeah we know they might is. say they might yeah. say one but yeah. we know we know yeah. we're in 12 it's like that shit yeah. in the elevator you know you go to on the like you ever get on the elevator and they, it skips the 13th floor and you're on the 14th you're like <laughs> like you know what floor you're on yeah now, let's just be real yeah. <laughs> like, like you know what floor yeah. you're you on. open it don't, and don't, you don't, jump out like oh no <laughs> yeah yeah like, let's just be real that's how we are with uh with one well with that, we guys, uh, we want to hear from you guys on this. Uh, if you guys have a, this is your question of the week, mind you. This is your, this is your, 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 your disclaimer here. If you guys had a, the ability to pitch an entire patch like process, basically like one year, if you had a one one way to actually build a patch process for a game. What would you do in it? Would you be including, uh, you know, one major patch? Or are you trying to do two major patches? And into this, would you be updating the community we want to hear what your ideal patch cycle would be like let us know make sure to drop it uh you guys can uh we'll have this posted up on our discord that is double tap.gg4 slash discord will be in our community questions of the week there make sure to go answer there you can check it out on the community posts on our youtube as well and we'll be uh i think do we, do we post that up on twitter I'm trying to remember uh it's on spotify i know that much yes can't remember on twitter, it's on twitter. As well. okay it's on twitter as well and it's also on our spotify go check it out there once again, what is your ideal patch year or patch cycle? Let us know and what you know the specifics and what you guys would do with it. We want to hear from the community, of course. Make sure to check that out. And also, not to forget, but we did talk about Evo 2024 earlier, but we do have a poll for it, and I forgot to ask it earlier, so I'm doing that now. Ha, didn't forget, really. I uh, just saved it for later. But what are you most excited for for Evo 2024? Are you excited for uh, new 2XKO footage? Are you excited for possible DLC showcase, right? Like Akuma, Slayer, and Beatrix uh, gameplay, possibly. Are you excited for the three uh, 3S tournament, the Third Strike tournament that's coming up? I know I am. Um, or are you just excited for the whole damn thing? Just Evo in general, Evo Japan in general right now is looking really good. You just want to see everything. Let us know. Those are your options. Once again, that's going to be on Twitter. That's going to be on Spotify. That's going to be on our Discord. That's going to be on YouTube. Come let us know. Uh, what you guys are waiting for for this weekend because we're going to talk about it next week. And with that, that is going to be it for this week's episode of Double Tap. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Of course, you guys can check out my awesome hosts uh, here on the show. You can follow Static Gorilla at Static Gorilla on all social media platforms as well as on Twitch. Tournaments, yes, no? Uh, This week, finally, yeah, we can... Oh, wait, I think they're at level up or something. Was that an expo? I don't know. We're going to try to play some Marvel at least sometime. But if not, we're going back to Tomb Raider, buddy. There you go. Yes. There you go. The classic, the classic. Nothing wrong with that. And then, of course, Josh ja, Josh I'm Blue Sky and on, and on Twitter. Any tournaments for you? I got to ask him. No, just, just no. Uh, no. The, the only tournament I'm in is, is like opening my pool this week. That's that's the tournament that I'm entering. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, got the, we got the water polo pool uh, tournament going on at his place. <laughs> Everyone's invited. Go look up his address. He'll he'll let you in, I swear. Uh, you guys can check me out at Crash Tech VS. Really, don't show up at his house. That you, That's just a one-way ticket for an ass whooping. Don't do it. Uh, you can follow me at Crash Tech VS, of course, on Twitter. I'm also usually behind the uh, Double Tap FGC Twitter account as well uh come follow us as well there much appreciated you guys can also uh check out the uh the the show uh, you guys can support the show excuse me comments uh feedback all that is really you know we love to hear it it's on all of the social media platforms of course uh and of course on our podcast platforms make sure to just give us a review leave us a comment let us know what you like about the show uh, what you don't like about us, we can go back into the training room to go, you know, work on that matchup, come back, you know, much stronger on that. You guys can check out our show directory, basically all our episodes at double tap dot GG. Uh, and of course, did I mention our Discord already? It doesn't matter. I'm going to say it again anyway. Double tap dot GG for slash Discord. Come join our awesome community. Come say what's up. Uh, come get involved in our, uh, you know, our polls, our community questions, as well as just things that we're posting up. I'm Probably gonna do, be doing a, a third strike watching in the in the Discord. I'm gonna be yeah, checking out the I forget, the, I the to, matches. I think I think we should be in the voice channels. We're gonna to be say that. saying what's up. <laughs> so come on through. Come join once again. Double tap dot gg forward slash Discord. Come check us out. And you guys can of course share the show. It helps a whole lot out. Uh, the support there free of charge. Just liking, retweeting the show on Twitter, sharing it with on Reddit. Uh, anyone that you might think might like the show might want to talk about the patch discussion we said earlier. Share it to them. Let you know. Let them know we exist. It's always awesome. We do appreciate everyone that has done it and everyone that will do it in the future. Uh, stay tuned after the show to hear about the other shows here on the MTB Network. 
We'll have a new episode next week. Post Evil 2024. It's going to be a good one. Make sure to you know come by to check that out. But until then, that's it for us. See you guys next week. Later. Peace.